I just want to make sure I'm sharing it in the right places. That's all. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's. Do, do, do. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Happy Hour podcast pregame episode. Of course, I am Ray, and I'm being joined by the one and only Tom Nutty. Tom jumps in almost every single week. Of course, Tom is an inspiring local comedian, dude. You've been getting out there all the time, just, you know, hitting it hard with shows, doing all kinds of, you know, comedy stuff. Like, how how's that going for you, dude? Like, I see all the time. Like, didn't you just uh, enter, like, some sort of, like, uh, competition or whatever just recently? I was at the, I was one of the finalists or uh, Magooby's new comedian of the year, which basically it's, uh, it's set up like throughout the year, they have monthly shows and the, the people that did the best on those shows get invited back for the end of the year show. Yeah. And you go through, go through the semifinals and then they pick three from each show. You go into the finals. I made it to the finals. I didn't win, but fuck it. That's, that's good enough of a win for me, you know? Yeah. I mean, that that's all that matters. I mean, it's all we're putting it out there. And uh, what I want to do real quick is uh, we're broke earlier for me personally. Of course, you know, we talk about all the time with the Happy Hour podcast with having a little bit of, you know, roots. It used to be Happy Hour TV. It's now a Happy Hour podcast. One of our good, good, dear friends, he was actually the DJ at my wedding, Skip Rearer. He passed away. Oh, I just started to hear that, man. Away on December 29th i believe it was i just caught word today um you know skip i've been to all kinds of concerts with them i've drank at parties with them i've drank at concerts with them so you know this episode and every episode moving forward will be dedicated to the memory of skip he's a big big part of you know the happy hour history and you guys will see him of course we do have a new fully fermented episode that is now airing for the month of january it's the jersey shore part two so make sure you check that out but also you will see skip in some of that old footage so definitely shout out to skip huge loss right here for all of us of course chris cloud you guys have seen chris cloud before in the past and there's matt right there coming to us live from his house <laughs> and his audio is not quite working yet so <laughs> blink but, twice if you need help yeah 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 blink twice if you need help <laughs> Wait, shake your fling your penis up and down if you don't know what <laughs> like oh there he goes what's up buddy how are you not much man chilling chilling <laughs> of course we're uh we're coming off of new year's this the first episode of the new year for the happy hour podcast pleasure being joined by tom nutty a good fuck oh, tom yeah. nutty right here on facebook live as we always do um make sure you hop in on the live feed um we will be airing here. Of course, Ray Ray will be joining us shortly for a regular episode. And, you know, I, I mean, like, I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump right into it. And our feature for the pre-show is our urban dictionary time, our urban dictionary word of the day. So what I'm going to do in, you know, when I was looking at this, I think I've been this before. It's called sober curious. So I think I've been sober curious before and sober curious is pretty much curious about staying sober for more than a few days, but not willing to drink myself into an oblivion. So I think I've been sober curious, numerous, and more so recently older in my life. But when I was younger, I wasn't as sober curious. It was more so drunk, night in, night out. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like that word of the day is particularly relevant for this day of the year. Like everybody's just coming off of New Year's. I'm sure 80% oh, yeah. of the world is sober curious right now. <laughs> But that'll be gone by Wednesday, dude. Yeah, yeah, it, it's almost as bad. Like, most of the world too is probably COVID curious as well. Like, okay, well, you know, I don't want COVID, but it's out there. But I also don't want to wear a mask, and I don't want to do this, and I don't want to do that. And yeah, we're we're very curious on a lot of things because we have no idea what the fuck's going on. Like, it, it's I, I, I was just waiting for the ball to just hit, and then the world just explode, and that's yep. spoilers. We all, <laughs> we all I went I went about three months of worrying about <laughs> shit. And then after that, I was like, I'm going to I'll play by the rules. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll follow all whatever, whatever rules there are, but yeah. I'm not, I'm not sweating the shit, you know, like it, it took up too much bandwidth in my head. And I was like, <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to go through life. I'll follow the rules, play, you know, do what I got to do. That's it. <laughs> and of course, uh, Tom, you have a uh, smoke break podcast. How's that coming along for you? Well, we took a, once, once the world started opening up again and, and live comedy and everything started yeah. coming back and then like I recently just switched jobs in the real world. So I've yeah. been, on, been on overtime for months, been doing shows every week, 
Like, I just haven't had time. But starting February, that's going to be all back up online again. Now that I have the studio set up that you can see behind me, you know, I'm not just doing it out of my bedroom this time. We're going <laughs> to try to do something fun. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you, man. I'm super jealous. Like you look like you got an actual, like real thing going on, but you know, I'm, we're just guys in a basement drinking beer. That's, hey, I'll, you know, I'll, that's, I'll send you, I'll send you pictures after this of when we okay. bought this house. Yeah. This was an, uh, this is the attic and it was yeah. unfinished when we bought the house. Oh, nice. So nice. this has kind of become like my eight month project to get it to this point. You know what I mean? And we're getting there. So you know how it is, Ray. Like a, yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a millionaire. You know what I mean? I'm oh, just yeah. Dude, baby me, steps, you know, and, and of course, there. you know, we're, we're leaving 2021. We're heading into 2022, but Jesus Christ did 2021 not go silently into the night. Like, nope. you know, first it takes John Madden from us. And if anybody doesn't know John Madden, of course, the Madden football games, you know, most legendary NFL coach of whole of all time. And then those six sons of bitches take Betty White. That's, yeah. you know, th- yeah. I, I'm so disappointed in that. Yeah. See, I have a different way of looking at it. Right. I think she, I think she took one for the team so that 2022 wouldn't start off so fucked up. <laughs> Because I mean, if it had been three days later, we'd all be like, oh, already 2022, you know? <laughs> Apparently she died peacefully in her sleep. But, you know, I look at it like this. It's like she had 18 days, 18 days to make it to 100. Like, what better way to make it to 100 and just be like, peace out, bitches. Like, did that you, to me, like, she couldn't wait 18 days. That's a quitter. That is did, a quitter. She could have went another 18 <laughs> days. Did you see? straight up. <laughs> did you see the math, math somebody put on Facebook where, like, she lived through X amount of leap years blah 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 so technically she was 100 and 100 day, 100 years old and four days yeah so she technically yeah. made it you know yeah <laughs> technically but i mean just imagine that though and i always thought about this as a kid imagine being born on leap year like you know you're, you're sitting there you're born on leap year and it's the whole thing of you know you're 26 but it's like bitch you're six right like, you ain't 26. <laughs> you're six you've been born on leap year every year like march I, I don't like the whole it's either february 28th or march 1st it's like but the thing is with that is do you get to choose every single year it's like you know does one year does it sway towards i want february 28th or does the next year sway towards i want march 1st like you know i would i would base it 100 percent on which day of the week it fell on Okay. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. who, wa- who wants Saturday. a Monday birthday? You know? <laughs> but but then it's like you get so used to it that when your birthday actually comes up on February 29th, you're just kind of like, oh, wait, no, 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 we're doing March 1st. Like, this ain't happening. <laughs> yeah, yep. I know how this works. The 29th is Friday, the first is Saturday. <sighs> no, but yep. you were actually born on this day. Get out of my house. Just, right. just get don't, out. Don't, of don't act like we care now. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Like, if you do, like, well, actually, with the leap year stuff, it kind of works in reverse, though. So, really, Betty White, like, if she she lived through all these leap years, let's say if Betty White was born on leap year, she'd only be about like fifty seven. So you know that that's the whole thing. You know, you you look at it, it's just kind of like okay, Betty White's born on leap year. Okay, boom. You know, that's the whole thing. So you know, it, it, it's weird how a lot of that works. But of course, Matt knows us one hundred percent. Shout out to Mister Skin. Mister Skin sent us Tommy Simbazo when we were having the interview with Mister Skin. Brought up Betty White and Betty White nudes. And yeah. Mr. Skin pretty much was like, well, I have those a part of my personal collection. And like me, I'm sitting there, the sick fuck I am. I'm like, oh, man, we're going to see like 80 year old Ben and White's tits. Like, you know, it, but he sends it to us. And it's like her when she's like, you know, I think 18, 19 years old or whatever and all that. And they are, they are pretty. They, are pretty I think they were from like the 1940s, 1950s, yeah. the pictures. Yeah. So I don't know how old she was then. I, I'm not doing the math. Fuck it. <laughs> but she, she was a hot little piece. Yeah. Oh, man, you got some World War II titties. I'm ready to see them. That's all, you know. <laughs> they, they did look like some World War II titties, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I mean, that's the thing. Like, she was like, she was pretty much like everybody's grandma. Like, England has like the Queen. We had Betty White. Like, that's the yep. whole thing. And I saw a meme of the Queen of England. 
and she she was uh, somebody from Star Wars, and she was like absorbing Betty White's power, and it basically <laughs> unlimited power, like you know. That's the whole thing. So you know, but yeah, I mean that's got to suck. Like you know, when I first heard she died, I was like, oh man, maybe she had COVID, or you know, maybe she had a heart attack, you know, something like that. But then they were like, she died peacefully in her sleep, and I'm like, well, that's like that. That's cool that she died peacefully in her sleep, but it was also. She was a coward because she had 18 fucking days. Like she could have lived to be 100 and then just peaced out. I think think we all, we all built it up so much that it was so like (laughs) anticlimactic. It was was like, oh yeah. After, after all this time, she just went to sleep. Okay. Like, (laughs) you know. (laughs) Betty White just goes to bed and she's just kind of like, you know what? I think this is it. Right. I'm done. I'm, I'm gonna, done. I'm just gonna close my eyes forever, and that's yep. the thing. Like, I'm envious of that because if I could just go to bed one night and just close my eyes forever, and everything goes away, I don't have bills anymore. I don't have any responsibilities. Sign me up for that. But no, I wake up every goddamn morning, and I'm faced with all this <laughs> bullshit. Like, you know, should have been born on a leap year, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's, like, it's like, oh, why do you have the rope around your neck? Because it's fucking the leap year. That's why. I'm waiting on the 29th. Only three yeah. and a half years to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh fuck! I've been six for four years. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never be able to buy cigarettes. Oh, and, fuck. Uh, and. Tom, how was it uh, when you were doing the the con- like like what what do you think so far? What's been your best show that you've done? You know, breaking into the comedy world because I I know you know you follow t- you know you're close with Tommy Simbazo, Eric Woodworth. You know, of course, you've always you know accredited us with the show. You love our show. You know, it, how how was it? You know, getting in like doing your first couple of shows. You know, and stand up in front of the mic, not doing it before. It's it's been a wild a wild journey. I'm not gonna lie. Like it's been a fucking good one, but it's been like super surreal for me personally, because like in the last just in 2021, I've done shows with Wendy, Tommy Simbazo, Eric, Justin Slagle. I mean, uh, Larry Lancaster. I've done the who's who of the Baltimore tour. I've been on shows with them, and yeah. I'm super fucking honored. I mean, I opened the Hard Rock. For Andrew Santino back on Memorial nice. Day. Like, you know, I've got to do a lot of fucking cool shit, you know? Yeah. And mm-hmm. so, but I think the, the best show that I've had yet is I got to do a guest spot with Justin Slagle, uh, Joe Robinson, and Eric Woodworth at McGooby's back in October. And that was like, for me personally, being a fan of all these guys for years, yeah, it was so surreal to be in like the green room with them and then like, Tommy showed up and Rob Mayer was there. Like it was so fucking surreal for me. Like it was such a good time. And of course, uh, shout out real quick. We're on Facebook live. Shout out to Mike Wagner. I was on Mike Wagner show not too long ago. He's commenting in the live feed. So what's up, Mike, if you're watching big shout out to you. And, you know, I mean, as you said, Tom, like, you know, that that's a thing. And you know how this works. Like, you know, I did wrestling as many years as I did wrestling. You know, that's that's almost like the kind of thing I was able to be on shows with guys like Kevin Nash. You know, I was able to wrestle guys like Jake the Snake Roberts or, you know, even if it's the kind of thing like, you know, you open a show, you're the first match in a very, very first match, which that puts a lot on your shoulders anyways. And, you know, you should know this anyway, said, you know, you're the first thing they're seeing. So you need to go out there and light a fire. So, you know, I always said that with a pro wrestling show, the most important matches were the first match, the match before intermission, the match after intermission, and the main event, because those are the matches that need to get the crowd engaged the most. And when you go out there as the first match, you're going to delegate to those fans the rest of the way, though. You know, it's going to be hard for the guys if you lose them right at the beginning. It's going to be kind of hard for those guys, you know, to kind of bring them back because match two is as important or – you know what? So you need to go out there and, and it's the same thing with comedy, you know, or anything else, you know, theater, that first act is what needs to bring the people up, you know? And I mean, even if it's the kind of thing that you kind of bomb a little bit, you got to have that one thing that, you know, boom, throws in that pop yep. and get people engaged and, you know. Oh, whatever. absolutely. Absolutely. Like we just did the, the new year's Eve show at the club up by my house, church of satire. Hanover PA, shout out. Those guys are the best in the fucking business. Like, they really are. They got the best the best club in the area. But we did the New Year's Eve show there, and I got to close that show. And that was a fucking party and a half. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was it was cool because we had 10, 
10 local comedians, you know, who, have, who none of us have really broken anything, you know, yeah. but we're, we're all kind of in the same level of things. And they put us all on the, the New Year's Eve showcase, which was awesome. It really was. And like that show was just like you said, it was from opening all the way through. Like you just had people that understood. It was like having 10 opening acts. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you had people that were just shooting, shooting for the fucking stars the whole time. And it worked all the way through. It was a, it was a good fucking time, man. It just really have was. a line of guys come out. They line up. It's like a police lineup. They all have boners. And it's just kind of like, all right, these guys are <laughs> <laughs> that's the way this is working and of course you know i i personally i didn't do anything on new year's like you know this year for christmas and new year's it was kind of down years for me and my wife were just kind of like uh do we really want to spend money like you know plus everything's going crazy with you know the the optimus prime virus or whatever the fuck it is that's you know, megatron yeah. yeah you know and, and i mean matt did you, did you did you do anything matt i know i know you probably got high but i mean other I, mean, than- I, I just uh stayed in got high yeah, and, uh, Shocking. Watched, <laughs> I watched uh, Peaky Blinders. I, oh, okay. I just watched Netflix. That's all I did. Hey, hey, fun fact about me. I'm I'm gonna say uh, I may or may not have gotten high for the first time in eight years on New Year's Eve. Oh. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say for sure because I don't know who's gonna listen to this. But <laughs> but just let you know, I, I laughed a lot. Like, <laughs> I laughed a lot. <laughs> Uh, was Tommy Sambazo anywhere around? <laughs> no, no uh-uh. I wouldn't get high with him around. He's got that good, good shit. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, it's been eight years, dude. I was just trying to get some dirt weed, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, not, I, I'm not ready for that professional grade stuff. You yeah, know? yeah. We, we all know, and Justin Schlegel told me 100% that if Tommy walks up to you and goes, hey, you want to try this? Always find oh. out what it is first, because Tommy will have Don't some sort it. of weird <laughs> Mid evil type bullshit that he will give you, and the next thing you know, you're fucking flying yeah. a fucking alien spaceship, fucking you yeah, know. Dude, not he he just shows going. he shows up to shows with like a cauldron, and he's just like, yeah. "We're gonna make this work," you know. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> I, I mean, he, he's also got that mushroom juice too, which of course you know. Shout out to right. Vincent Painter; he had brought that mushroom juice. And Ashley Pontius said that, you know, when Tommy brought it on one of our past episodes, and when Tommy brought it, he's like, I think I fucked up. And he's like, <laughs> I gave some of that, uh, some of that juice to, uh, you know, Vince Painter. And she's like, well, what did Ray think about that? And he's like, oh, he didn't give a fuck. He was cool about it. And I'm just like, I don't know, whatever. Like, you know, it's not going to be held on me if Tommy Simbazu kills Vince Painter. With my- <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, what you do with it? <laughs> yeah, Vince owns owns that one weed dispensary so you know he talks about the scooby snacks all the time which you know matt was highly excited about when we went to bubba's celebrity game he's like which, oh he's like man you should have brought some scooby snacks which which yeah. one does he own do you know uh chesapeake apothecary oh, okay it's down in la plata so gotcha. over that way actually i drove by it one day when i was at work and i was gonna pop in and say hi but i was like uh, i'm at work like you know my truck's tracked just for some reason if someone happens to drive by <laughs> And seize my truck. That's the <laughs> Whenever I'm in saying hi, or if I come back and I smell like that or whatever and all that, I'm just like, nah, bro. I, I was just saying hi. I was just saying, as you're getting arrested and beaten. Yeah. yeah, I was just saying hi while I was high. <laughs> well, it's funny because a company I used to work for, we built a, a grow house for a big dispensary in Baltimore. And yeah. like literally all our tools and everything came back off that job, just reeking of weed. Like, oh, I didn't think that that smell could get into, like, metal, <laughs> but it fucking does. <laughs> oh, dude, that's well, one of the most punch enough, yeah. odors I've ever seen in my life. And it's funny because I've, I've actually, I've put copiers into um, weed dispensaries before, and you would sit there and you look at it, and I think I'd probably be able to walk in and rob a bank easier than I would a weed dispensary. Because it's like you come up, oh, yeah. they, oh, yeah. door, they let you in through a secure door, then you have to sign something, then they need your ID, then they let you in through another secure door. You have this motherfucker walking with you and following you around every fucking place you go. And a lot of them have fucking armed security. So it is insane. Like that goes to say, like, you know, a lot of people, you know, if they sit there and try to deny or anything like that, that that's a multi million dollar business. No, it's definitely. A fucking multi-million dollar business. I'll, I'll give you some inside baseball here, right? When we did that big job we did for that company, 
Yeah. They op- it was like a, a $3 million job. They offered to pay in cash. Yeah. <laughs> like, and we were like, what the no. fuck? But I guess it, it's set up that they can't put certain amount of money in the bank because of federal <laughs> regulations. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because in Maryland, it's technically not rec- recreational. <laughs> so, right. so, so the cartels have nothing to do with it at all. Absolutely not, dude. That was, yeah. I can't believe you would assume that. That's crazy. <laughs> How dare you? It's fucking Sign wild, man. Get yourself out of here, dude. <laughs> watching too much Alex Jones, dude. <laughs> Shout out also to D.A. Gilbert, aka David Gilbert. It, you know, he's written a couple of uh, novels, Serpent's Love. You know, uh, make sure you pick those up on Amazon. He commented here on a uh, Facebook Live. He's like, up in smoke. The show is literally giving me a contact buzz. So, yeah. You're welcome, <laughs> David Gilbert. Right here. So, oh, yes, Serpent's Love. Yep. Make sure you go out and uh, pick that up on, uh, on Amazon and uh, see where it's available at, at your local bookstores and uh, show uh, David Gilbert a little bit of love. Of course, that, uh, that uh, front cover is done by our good buddy, um, Steve Freeman, you know, he does all kinds of great work. He did the work on the front cover of that, also on the front of Matt's shirt. He's done the artwork on that. And oh, yeah. uh, our uh, our nice, yeah, fun, our podcast Halloween shirt that we have as well. Oh, yeah, he's got like a, a raptor in a headlock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and that's the yeah. thing. It's like I just pretty much told him, okay, look, I have an idea for a shirt. Raptor, wrestler with a headlock, fireworks, go. And that's he's what he like- said. He's like, I got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't worry. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. I, I, have, I have so much respect for the guys that do that kind of artwork because, like, I, I'm i not creative at all in that realm. But, oh, like, me the, neither. Dude, the guy that did the, the artwork for Smoke Break, it's a uh, sticker champ on uh, Instagram, right? Really? Everybody give him a follow. Yeah, sticker yeah. champ. He did the artwork for my podcast. And I literally was like, look, man, here's a rough idea of what I want. Like, I told him I wanted a table with like microphones, but I wanted it to be drawn like Courage the Cowardly Dog, right? Like that's that's what was in my head. And he fucking hit it back and he nailed it out of the park. Dude's fucking great. And I was just like, oh, this is why we pay people like you because (laughs) you're good at what you do, you know? It's like, look, I have this design. I want to have, you know, it's going to be for a podcast and we're going to be sitting there and there's going to be dicks for microphones. I need all these (laughs) Yes. There's nothing but a table full of dick microphones, and that's it. It doesn't say what my podcast name is. It's just a table with a bunch of those, uh, you know, suction cup floppy dildo dicks. <laughs> yeah, yes. I mean, imagine doing that though. Like, you know, you sit there, you, you put that thing down, and it's a microphone, but you plop it down, and it's just like, and Bro. you're sitting there trying to talk. It's like, do you, does it pick up like a breeze at that point? Like, you know, at that point, the the windscreen kind of, you know, doesn't. You know, even- I will let you know because now I want a dildo microphone more than anything in the world. <laughs> uh, we, yeah. 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 We what we need to do is we need to make one and patent it. And then whenever we have adult film stars on, we send it to them to use oh my God. Cool, you know, <laughs> microphone. And it's the kind of thing that you know you can sit there and it's like, okay, so you do your show, and then the next thing you know, you just slowly lower yourself down on the microphone. And the next time someone sees it, they're like, I thought that was a white dick last week. Why all of a sudden is it a black dick? Like what, it, what, what it just cuts to a 15 second commercial of Ray being like, Welcome to Dildo Mics. <laughs> 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 and you just plug it. Like <laughs> That would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. They just go, oh, man, that that like I could have sworn that thing was a white dick last week. It's like, okay, it, look, I know it's a black dick, but it's whatever it wants to be. Okay, don't don't judge me. All right? It's twenty twenty two. It can yeah, be what yeah, it don't wants. Judge, yeah, don't judge my dick microphone. How dare you? Did you just assume it's gender? Like, get yeah, the fuck yeah. out of here. <laughs> oh fuck. Oh my god. Yeah. Someone just looks. They're like, this microphone smells like shit. I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> it's multifunctional guys yeah yeah it, it, it'd be the first time to ever feed one of those urge that you just sit there and you hold the microphone and you're just gonna ah, ah. <laughs> and then, like you're on facebook i mean that's the thing what it would it if you were to sign on the facebook live and i'm really like we were in facebook jail for a little bit for something we didn't even do it was just a meme that we posted but you know just imagine how long would you be able to get away in the metaverse with a dick microphone like, that's the thing. Like, you know, how long do you actually sit there and think that they will put up with that? You know, you know the, the weird part about that is, is I feel like that's one of the least offensive things you could find on Facebook. But yet that's the one that will get flagged. 
Yeah. Right. Oh. Like my my Facebook account is on probation right now. <laughs> <laughs> and look, I'm going to tell you guys why. Because I found this video of like 1980s like country line dancing right and it was fucking ridiculous okay yeah. and all i commented was fucking white people right <laughs> i'm a white guy i don't care like I, I thought it was funny no i got put in probation for i don't know how long it's been like six months it just keeps yeah. flagging me as in probation you know what how i don't get you be racist against your own people yeah Bro, I, I, it, to me it wasn't even like a race thing it was a funny thing to say and i was like okay nobody's gonna give a fuck about this Dude, an hour later, I've been in probation for fucking eight months. Like, Easy. I don't know what's going on. You know, I, I don't get it because Facebook, you know, they gave everybody such a hard fucking time, such a hard way to go. But then yet they were the ones that got into trouble for misleading people and, you know, posting stuff that makes people pissed off at other people. They were posting racist shit. Yep. They get people mad at other people. And that's right, Facebook. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you get mad about it or not, because I'll just go back over to YouTube live if I need to. So... You know, that hey, just so we're clear, the views expressed by Ray in this are not expressed by me because I don't want my Facebook blocked. <laughs> well, I love already, you. You're already like locked up. It's like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. They just, just walk in more like, time. Yeah. <laughs> you, Look, you, just keep, you can keep me in probation forever. I don't care. Just don't turn it <laughs> off. All right. Come on, man. <laughs> Tom goes for his Facebook parole hearing. Oh, my God. Like, oh, Tom, I don't know. You were associating with those happy hour podcast guys. Uh, we're gonna add what, like other. What exactly did you mean by fucking white people? Yeah, yeah. Look, watch the video. Watch the video of the line dancing. Yeah. Everyone will know what I mean. Be like, oh, so you have nudes of Betty White when she was younger, eh? Okay. <laughs> to be fair, it was World War II. I didn't know any better. Well, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, would they be more upset of Betty White nudes, like from like? 70 years ago or betty white nudes from her current state that's oh, the thing oh, she's <laughs> dead she's dead now ray so that would be yes. weird <laughs> <laughs> they're, just, they're just all topsy pictures <laughs> that's the thing it, it, oh my god break it. betty white not dead <laughs> betty betty white seen in central california that's <laughs> That's good. It's going to be like Tupac where everybody's like, she's on a fucking island. I know she's on an island. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it's going to end up being. What be fun is if she's faking her death. That would be oh. fun. Like, what if, you know, she, what if she reappeared on her 100th birthday yes. for the party? Yeah, she comes out of a fucking giant cake for oh her fucking God. birthday. But it's like random. naked. Yeah, she just yeah. comes out naked out of a fucking yeah. cake. Yeah, she she comes out of a cake at like some like Biden press conference naked <laughs> and Biden dies on the spot. And you just see Kamala just sitting there just drooling, like, like oh finally, <laughs> he's dead. <laughs> this then, is my time. Yeah, and then Trump just comes up and grabs her by the pussy. And that's just yeah. <laughs> Oh God! Yeah, you're getting banned again. <laughs> you're really trying to get Facebook on this one. Ray, Ray's just like, I'm going to use all the algorithms against yes. me right now. Yes. <laughs> what, 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 he's just, what, yeah, he's what, tiptoeing what, around those algorithms. <laughs> what can I use that eventually in time when I put on a VR headset and I see, and I don't know if you've seen the VR version of Zuckerberg. That is not an accurate representation of Zuckerberg. <laughs> Like Why, that's the most, <laughs> that is the most non lizard looking human being I've ever seen in the he, VR world. He and, looks more human in the VR world than he does in real life. Yes, yes, <laughs> and that's the thing. I'm like, he definitely put himself over more in the VR world. Oh, yeah. It's going to be the kind of thing that I'm going to be sitting there, and once I get an Oculus, I'm going to be playing bar fight. And the next thing, <laughs> I'm going to go dark. Like the whole bar is going to go dark. And I'm going to turn around, and there's like fucking zuckerberg in his true lizard form and he just starts beating the shit out of me but i feel no. it for real through the headset every uh, time you hit him you just get put in facebook jail oh, <laughs> that's how the game yes. works it adds, it adds a week to facebook jail yes. so you just got to sit there and take it while every time you hit him back it's like facebook jail facebook yeah jail. yeah yeah that that that'd be amazing if you know it was the kind of thing where they made a game where you had to escape Facebook jail, like oh, pretty yeah. much all this stuff. We're like, it's kind of like prison break, but it's you escaping from Facebook jail. And there's just all this shit. There's all the hate that they've spread that like, you need to like 
filter your way through to be able to get out. Like you need to somehow like take like a broomstick and try to wrestle the keys from Zuckerberg's like, you know, belt to try to get the keys off and slide them down. And every time you do it, he turns around, his lizard tongue comes out or whatever. And, and right, right before you get out, there's like a troll that asks you like a social justice question. And if you answer it wrong, you go back to the beginning. Yes, yes. <laughs> You better hope that you answer this one right. But a right. while you're just like, I don't watch the news. I don't know. I, I don't, don't know what's right and wrong anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and we're going to wrap up our pregame episode. And we're going to roll in to our regular weekly episode, which will air on all major podcast platforms. Ray Ray is coming through now awesome. and momentarily. And we will rock and roll for our regular weekly episode. And uh, there she is right there. Hi. So, hello. How are you? And uh, what we're going to do, we're going to start our audio episode. So for everybody tuning in on Facebook Live for our pre-show, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you, uh, we're going to just go ahead and roll right on through. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Happy Hour Podcast. Of course, I'm Ray. Matt's not here in studio live this week. He's at home and we are being joined by Tom Nutty as well. And our featured guest, Ray Ray. And Ray Ray, uh, this is going to get hard for me because it's Ray and Ray Ray. It's like, I know. Oh, Ray doing one. Hey, Ray. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, of course, your website is getting ready to go live soon. So it with is. your official website, now, uh, of course, we know there's a lot of avenues out there, OnlyFans, you know, all that. Your your official website, is there anything with your official website that's that might be different from, you know, other content that you have out there? Or is that going to be where everybody can go to find everything all at one time? So basically, yeah, it's where they can find everything that I've done. Um, and this year I invested in new camera equipment. And so there'll be about 50 videos that are just on my website alone. So fans will only be able to see them on my website. But the coolest thing about my website is there's a live streaming capability. So the fans will be able to see the porn being filmed in real time. Oh, sweet, oh, sweet. That's pretty yeah. cool. Well, That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just real. now, now with, with the real time, now with, with that, can that real time stuff factor into like a VR headset or something like that too? Or like, would you be able to like, you know, it's being filmed in real time and it's like, you know, someone can just come up and just kind of like look down and see like what's going on down here. And then they can just kind of look over and go, Hey, Oh, Hey, look, there's a guy like over there just smoking a cigarette. Let me just kind of stroll over to there. <laughs> um, so right now there won't be any VR. Um, I haven't really gotten into VR. I've shot for a few companies that do VR stuff. Okay. But I would have to reprogram the site for that to be capable. Gotcha. Right yep. now, it's just going to be streaming it in like four four K or a step down of that, depending on what your you know device can do. So okay, cool. And when you did your VR stuff, we had Nova Sky on last week, and mm -hmm. she pretty much said with her VR stuff, Johnny five, the camera looked like Johnny Five. So did you have like Johnny Five? You ever see Short Circuit? Like she said, it looked yeah. like Johnny Five from Short Circuit. So you're just sitting there doing your thing, and you have like angry. <laughs> Johnny Five just like staring down at you, and it's just kind of like this robot <laughs> so judging everything we're doing right now. <laughs> yeah, that would be crazy. I haven't shot with that high caliber of VR yet. Um, okay. It's mostly more of a step down than that. Um, but that sounds very intimidating, actually. <laughs> Instead of Johnny Five, it's Wally. It's the sad yeah. <laughs> Wally just looking down on everything. <laughs> and uh, and you also you were in the military. It, correct? it was yeah i was a uh, army medic how how was that like that's got to be wild like i mean yeah a lot of people probably are like man you must have saw a lot you know you must have seen a lot of weird shit in you know your adult film movies it's like no no no, no. you probably saw a lot of crazy shit in the military when you were a medic and I, I don't know what all you know you're probably allowed to talk about or whatever but what's probably one of the craziest things that you would probably be able to talk about that you saw when you were a medic I mean, it was mostly just medical support, simple things. I never saw anything overly crazy, which I'm lucky um, <laughs> because that I, I had friends who were medics who went over and saw their friends die and uh, they were never the same. So I'm, I'm very glad and blessed. I never actually had to see any of that, um, but I did learn a lot and uh, I came out as a sergeant. So I learned how to discipline and lead people, <laughs> um, which sometimes... I'd say the biggest issue with me, I'm very type A. <laughs> so it's hard to be in the adult film industry where most people are type B. They're like, we'll get there when we get there. And yeah. I'm like, no, 9 a.m. means 9 a.m. So yeah. it's been a big transition from, 
you arrive 15 minutes early from when you're supposed to start to you start two hours late. So <laughs> I'm the same way. I'm super like type A. It's like if I need to be somewhere at seven o'clock, I'm there at like 645. Yes. Like that's the whole I, I need to meet my times and my quotas. Now, you know, of course, you know, you've seen some crazy stuff. You were a medic. Have you ever seen anybody extract their own tooth? Have you ever seen that? I have helped with extractions, but I've never seen someone do it themselves. Okay. Well, uh, we live, we're, we're from a unique place called Baltimore. So we have <laughs> a lot of junkies down here in that, you know, so I, 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 and there was one night, one day I was on break at work and I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm eating a club sandwich. And I just, I'm looking forward. <laughs> and I just, I see this guy in his van. I'm like, what the fuck is this dude doing? And he's sitting there and he's like, ah, uh, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> And I'm looking and this dude's like digging in his mouth with like a flathead <laughs> screwdriver. And I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? And like, he's just digging and digging. And this is like five minutes worth of him just digging. With, and then at one point he, he drops a screwdriver <laughs> in between the door well. And so he gets mad and he picks it up and he starts talking shit to the screwdriver and he goes back to it. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I can't figure out. Yeah. What, what I mean, he, yeah, that would be a lot of work. It, it was hard just to extract them, like when you actually have lidocaine and an actual dentist oh, like yeah. telling you what to do. It's like a lot of work to extract a tooth. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, he, he was sitting, <laughs> apparently what he was doing is he was he was chewing. He was like making the gum go away. He was like chawing yeah. away at gum because that wasn't the worst part. The worst part was he reached down and like the, that little section like in your door. He reached down and he grabbed a pair of pliers, like yeah. needle nose pliers. And he sits there and I just watch him. He grabs his tooth and rips his tooth clean out of his mouth. Like blood flies out of his mouth. And he starts talking shit to the tooth and he slams the tooth on the ground. He speeds out of the parking lot. I'm just sitting there eating my sandwich. Like this is something I'm never going to forget. <laughs> That's craziness. Yeah. You'd have to be really up on something to pull your own tooth out. Hey, I'll, yeah. jump in, I'll jump in on this one. You don't have to be up on something to pull your own tooth out because I've done it, right? <laughs> I did it with a Leatherman and a little bit oh, of Jack what? Daniels. Oh, a Leatherman, like the multi-tool yeah. with the pliers. Oh, that's yeah, buddy. A and I, I, just for the record, I'm not a junkie. I'm not any of those things. I just have a history. Have a, I'm a fucking idiot. Yes. And yeah, that's, that's how I got mine out. And I, I promise you for the three seconds after it came out, I was like, that was the best decision ever. <laughs> after that, it was like, that was the worst decision ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I went to a dentist and they fixed it for real. But, you know, it <laughs> happens. Yeah, that's why they get paid a lot. Yeah, yeah. way more than me, I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> and I realized it about four seconds after that tooth came out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just go and you're just like, I need a numbing agent. I don't care what. Just just shove some sort of needle up there. And, you know, yeah, it, it's insane. Yeah. That's no. crazy. I, I'd say the most awkward injury I ever saw was a guy got, um, we were doing training with paintball rounds. So paintball is more realistic than just like blanks when you're just like, you know, shooting. If you get hit with paintballs, you're actually going to like find cover. Yeah. So a guy got shot in the ball sack with <laughs> a paintball oh, round. Um, oh. And his ball sack was very swollen and purple, and he was very embarrassed. Um, but it was really funny. Like, it looked uh, very, very strange, like an alien sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't understand. I don't understand why they don't wear a cup when they play paintball. Yeah. Like, I, I just, not that you were playing paintball, but just in general. Yes. Like, they're always like, oh, goggles. I'm like, you know what? I'd rather take one to the face yeah then to the nutsack just yeah saying. he'll he'll always find cover from now on i don't know if he's still in but he'll I never, would never i would never play paintball again that's, that's <laughs> yeah. how i would handle that <laughs> yeah but if you're told to do something you have to do it you have that's to true it. like i said you guys weren't playing paintball but same yeah. theory you know yeah and of course, uh, next Friday, the seventh, you're doing uh, what is it? X three, I believe. X three with that. What, ha, what's all going to be going on with that? In case anybody wants to come out to uh, X three, it's just a big expo. It's kind of like Exotica, where you can go out and just meet all really awesome content creators, porn stars, and just meet us. And it'll be in LA, so 
there'll be a lot more big turnout for that one than the exoticas (laughs) at least for like star wise you know because you have to travel for the exoticas they're not in la so okay okay i got you i got you now with that have you had any like odd fan experiences because that's always you know like someone just comes in and they're like look ray ray i made a replica of your vagina out of a beer can and a sponge and and i just i have my way with it every would you be able to sign and you're just like look just give it to me i'll sign it you're telling me too much just you know just okay (laughs) i'm not very well known yet so i haven't had too much of that um more of what i've had is more women come to me they write me sometimes and they're like it's so awesome that you're so sexually open it shows and gives me a role model to be able to do it as well which is really great for me because that's one of the reasons i do what i do is to show other women you can be as slutty as you want and here's how to do it safely so yeah yeah so so pretty much it's almost the kind of thing that you don't need to be perfect you know you just need to forge your own path you know in the industry and do all that it's crazy how everybody does and tom you you got a question man yeah yeah it's it's kind of an oddball question but i'm gonna throw it out there (laughs) you you know what podcast you're on tom i know i i know (laughs) i'm just saying so a good friend of mine his name is tyler he's from canada right okay He's 29 and he's a virgin. And I told him that we were doing this podcast and he asked if there was anything that he could do to help with his uh, love life. You know, Mm -hmm. now he's a strange bird. He's, he's Jewish and he also celebrates Kwanzaa. He's a strange dude, but he wants to know. And it's the only person that offered me a question to ask you. So (laughs) what do you have to say about that? (laughs) So what should I like? What, advice can I give him to meeting yeah. women? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, the biggest thing I'd say for women is you just need to be confident in yourself. Um, and you have to have a really thick skin because for me, I can go out to a bar and I can wait around for a little bit and then maybe I'll hit it off with a guy or I can just go up to a guy, approach him and be like, you want to go back to my place? And majority of the time it works out for me. Um, most of the time it doesn't work out for guys. I'd say probably one in five, most of the time, depending on what you look like. Um, so really he just needs to be confident and put himself out there and have a thick skin and a lot of resiliency. So you hear that Tyler, you can do it. Yeah. That's what we're getting out of this. Yeah. I mean, Tom, if not, you can always just craft him that weird, like beer can vagina out of yeah. a beer that can and a sponge beer can yeah. and a sponge i don't know how good that would be um, i think that i think that's all he's ever had so he'll be okay you know yeah. Yeah. Or, no. or you, you <laughs> sit there you can just take a pringles can yeah. and just you know kind of finagle yeah. that somehow you know to wear that Dude, he's, he's he's more of like an eminem minis kind of can it open <laughs> yes that's all he wants yep <laughs> <laughs> and one, one thing that's crazy, and of course, uh, Ray Ray, you know, you have uh, you know, all kinds of different social media platforms and all that. I wasn't sure. Do you have Facebook? I'm not because we we're we we're just joking around about Facebook before we came on, and how you know we all went to Facebook prison for small mm-hmm. little things that we talked about. If they had like a Facebook like parole hearing, like how you could get out of like Facebook, <laughs> you know? Oh, you yeah. would. Oh, well, you talked um, about this. Oh, you know what? Yeah. You didn't talk about. <laughs> social injustice stuff you're going back to jail (laughs) um i have a facebook but it's for my actual identity so i keep them separate um but i'd say probably facebook jail is kind of like instagram jail so i'd say a lot of adult performers get their instagram taken down at some point in their career which they can just take it down without even telling you with you recently because I, I feel like yeah. when we first announced it I tagged you a few times mm-hmm. in it and I'm sitting there and I'm looking I'm like what the f-? I'm like I can't I'm like am I typing this wrong and then yeah. I saw that Erica tagged you in it and I clicked on it and it said this user does not or this you like something yeah. this user does not exist I'm like oh I'm like I'm like she's in prison I was like they got her like yeah. <laughs> and they don't ever give you your account back like i've tried to get it back multiple times like i literally at this point want to put up a video and just tell instagram to suck my dick like just i just it's it's terrible you put all this time and energy into building up followers and they just take your page down for and i didn't have any like nudity or anything sexual on my page so it's it's really strange but now twitter's like twitter's like the wild west for adult stars right (laughs) Like you can pretty much put whatever you want on Twitter. 
basically makes um, almost no sense because they'll ban people for you know whatever bullshit but yeah you know not Um, that i disagree but it's like it's such a weird uh up and down with twitter (laughs) it's like Twitter is a strange beast because you can't have it like real any nudity in like your profile photo, but you can post porn on your page. So. And, and you can put like hardcore shit on your page. It's <laughs> yeah. not like, you know, oh, here's a fucking nude. It's like, you know, a real video. It's like, what the fuck? You know? Yeah. No, <laughs> that, really that's great, actually, I'm glad there's an actual platform for it because. Oh, yeah. I'm all for, I'm all for it. It's just like, <laughs> how, how does this you know it doesn't make too much sense in the social social media world it's like all right you know whatever fuck it we'll we'll play (laughs) the game well uh, what's funny too is that with social media and this just this actually this happened to us yesterday is that with a social media page like especially facebook like you have to like kind of have like structure it like it's a real name so our you know facebook is happy hour pod so it has to have a first name and a last name and then you know with that you also have to have a birth date so you know i said it and i put all right whatever january 1st whatever so yeah. i have all these people coming to the page saying happy birthday happy birthday happy birthday and i'm just kind of like uh thanks but, I mean, yeah you done when you like started the yeah uh, yeah first show i i didn't think about that or whatever but yeah i was just kind of like hey thanks for the birthday wishes uh yeah. You know, this was, uh, you know, I appreciate it. You know, the date was, you know, just a date that I chose just randomly or whatever, but I appreciate, you know, the birthday wishes or whatever and, and all that. Have you ever had anybody uh, send you anything? Like, you know, send you anything for like you know, your birthday or just you have like an Amazon wish list or anything like that? Um, I don't have an Amazon wish list because I'm a big, big girl and can buy a lot of my own stuff. But <laughs> I uh, I did have someone buy me a cum slut collar that I love a lot. Um <laughs> So that was a surprise Same-sy. in my PO box. So um, I wear that proudly. I've worn it in a few gangbangs. So oh, nice, nice. Matt has a couple of those in those closets behind him. So yes. yeah, he appreciates them when he does his gangbangs as well. So right, right behind those indoor shutters is where he yeah. keeps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Matt opens them up, and it's just it's just like a hurricane of you know cum slut you know <laughs> ones. There was a line of like, yeah. these yeah. cum yeah. You, you yeah. gank yeah. one, it's like the Adams family where you <laughs> yank and then shoot you down in like a fucking tunnel and shit. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. I want to go in there. <laughs> you pull it through, and all of a sudden, you're in Narnia. Like, the next thing you know, oh, really? there's a lion just fucking talking to you. Okay. And you're like, what the fuck's okay, happening? Like- gang in Narnia. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not the Narnia we all think of, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> And speaking of which, we like to ask this question to uh, all of our adult film stars. Mm-hmm. If you, of course, porn parodies are out there. If yes. you could choose one or two things to parody, like if you one hundred percent could choose anything and you know direct it and star in it, anything like that, what what would you choose parody mm-hmm. wise? Also, please say Night Rider because no one ever picks that. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> well, the first thing that comes to mind is probably Star Wars, but that's probably been done over many yeah. times um let's think there's a lot um yeah i'd say star wars at this point okay is there anybody in particular you would want to play for star wars mm. oh leia of course i mean she already <laughs> has like that sexual role anyway but you know yeah. Yeah. You could be like, I don't want to be near you, you fat, fat fuck, or whatever. Like, just like so. Star Star Wars entering with all the stormtroopers. Yeah, just- I got an idea though. Since she's been in the military, it's not quite Star Wars. But how about Starship Troopers? Oh uh-huh. yeah, I like. How about Saving Private Ryan, dude? Hmm. Well, yeah. I think there's a movie called Savings Ryan Ryan's Privates. I think there's a movie. So I kind of already yeah, that's been done. Yeah, it's probably uh, been done. Yeah, I'll, I'll shut up. I'll shut up. Ryan's privates. No, I don't <laughs> like the Knight Rider idea though, because at that I'm point, you. you know, yeah. of course, Kit, you know, Kit is that smart car, like not like the smart cars, like these fucking smart cars we have, you know, in our day. Like, like he was a smart, like, you like know, a real goddamn yeah, smart, like car. a real, you know, smart guy inside of a car. Like, you know, at that point, it's like, does it like automatically just do scenes? Like, you know, how Kit talks and you see like the lines go up and down, it's just like Michael. 
Michael, I need you to fuck her now. And then it just turbo boosts him like to wherever they live or whatever. And, you know, it just, it's a whole, you know, theme song that they have of the car turbo boosting. Oh, and he's, he's taking it. His- she just fucks the car. Oh, oh. Yeah. I mean, that was done in a cartoon. Yeah. I mean, or oh, it's the kind of thing that instead of a gear shifter, it's just like kind of like when I appreciate we were talking a little bit about what, how long would we be able to go if we had a dick microphone? Like just like one of those like dildos with a suction cup, you just put it down and there's a microphone inside of it and it just <laughs> kind of swings. Like how long would you be able to survive on Facebook Live with, you know, a dick mic or something yeah. like that? And, but instead, instead of a gear shifter, it's just a dick. So then that way the girl can get in, Kit locks the doors and Kit's just like, you know, starts playing playing music it's kind of like you know alexa inside of a car so you know it's the whole thing and i just realized i just said the the god forbidden word like i looked over and my echo was lit up and i'm like oh no (laughs) if there's any words i shouldn't use (laughs) because i i'm very just sexually open and say a lot of stuff so oh i trust me what you can be as open as you want on your show it doesn't matter Yeah, yeah, Ray, yeah, Ray just accidentally ordered four dick microphones on his Alexa. You know? <laughs> like, we're fine. We're fine. Yeah, my, my wife just sits there and looks and goes, what are these dick microphones? Like, I don't, I don't understand where, where, are these, where are these coming from? It's like, well, you know, uh, what I want to do is I want to line the dick microphones up, but I want them to kind of be like the balls when you hit them and they just go kind of like this. Jesus but you, it just goes in and it's just like, da, 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 da. <laughs> You know, then that way, when people are seeing us on Facebook Live or YouTube, you know, of course, shout out to everybody tuning in on Facebook Live. Shout out to everybody watching us on YouTube. Shout out um, to my dude, Tonello. I know he's on there. <laughs> That's my dude. Yeah, shout out to your buddy who uh, who you're going to send the, the vagina can to. Yeah, that's um, Tyler. Tonello is actually on the Facebook Live, and he wants to know if you prefer Ritz or Saltines. Ritz, for sure. Yeah, solid move. We all picked that one. They're the high class. So. Yeah, exactly. We're all adults here. We don't eat saltines anymore. <laughs> Not unless you're doing that challenge, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> there is no challenge that involves saltines that I want to be a part of. You'd probably die. Yeah. <laughs> I probably would. <laughs> and that's the thing. He also said, he said, is Tom Nutty a good porn name? So, of course, Tom goes by Tom Nutty. So I would that's, I, I don't go by that. That's my real God given name. I, I didn't know that that was your real name. Yes, I shot with a guy that was Troy McNutt. (laughs) I feel like that's too campy. Like you should go with more of something like nutty for real. You know? (laughs) But no, that's 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 my real name, Ray. Like that's not a that's not a that's not a stage name. I thought that was your gimmick name. I I didn't know wrestling world. I thought that was your gimmick name. I no, dude. My dad was a Baltimore City. Like inner city dude, he was 55. My mom was 15, and his name was his last name was Nutty. It's a real thing. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> hey, could you imagine that? Like paging officer Nutty, that officer Bro, Nutty. <laughs> when, I went to, when I went to go get my driver's license, oh my I gosh. lived on I lived on Elmo Drive. So oh, when I gave them my information, they were like, "No way, this is fucking real." <laughs> yeah, um, if you had gone to basic, the the drill sergeants would have had a time with you oh for sure oh for sure yeah they would have had a fun time with you (laughs) that's fine you know i've come to embrace the name at this point like yeah i've heard it all at this point like (laughs) whatever you know i'm not worried about it that's the thing like i had a lot of people tell me my uh my wrestling name actually like sounded Mm -hmm. like a porn name which was chase rawlings and you know when i first did the name everybody was like that sounds kind of like a porn name like it's just my last name and my mom's maiden name put together that's it and they're like well i mean that's what it sounds like and i'm just kind of like oh whatever i'm still going i don't care (laughs) if i if i'd have done my mom's maiden name and my last name I would have had the best porn star name ever. Please be like nutty assholes or no, something like no, that. No, it, 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 <laughs> Creamy nutness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nutty McCream. <laughs> it would it would have been Jermaine Nutty, and then I would have shown up and people would be like, what the fuck is this? They would have been looking for, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> Jermaine Nutty. <laughs> That's it, you know. <laughs> Oh my god oh my god uh i mean that's the thing like yeah as you said when you went for your driver's license like this thing i got mine renewed not too long ago and like here in maryland they have like the little crab in like the corner or whatever 
And like I sat there and I tried to barter with like the lady behind. I'm like, do I have to have a crab? Like, can I get like a skull or like, a <laughs> or like something like that? I mean, I don't want crab. Like, a fucking dildo. Yeah, yeah. Like, can I get a dildo microphone on this or something? Like, I mean, I, I don't like <laughs> something. Like, you know, besides just crab. Like, come on. Do you know who I am? I invented the dildo microphone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like it's like organ donor crab it's like so are you saying that i'm an organ donor with crabs like is is this what what you're trying Bro, to put out here right now your yours, yours says organ donor and then it's just maybe next to it like <laughs> <Maybe. that. laughs> i mean you could invent the microphone and it could actually like record the what's happening when the woman uses it then you probably make a lot of money yeah well i i said on the pre-show you know for anybody listening at home make sure you go to youtube <laughs> You find us on Facebook. I'm just in thought here. <laughs> and, and I told him, I was like, it'd be like the kind of thing that one week you would have, you know, the dildo microphone and it would be a white dildo microphone. The next week you would have it and it would be a black dildo microphone. And then it's just kind of like, someone's just kind of like, why, why is that? Oh, no, no reason. No reason. Just that, that yeah. microphone can be whatever it wants to be. Okay. Don't, don't question me or my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I think what we're going to do real quick is we're going to get into our games. So we're going to get into our O to Humanity segment. So Ray Ray, we play a handful of games with all of our guests. And uh, one of which we're going to add something else because this was just something I saw online. It was actually a TikTok. And the TikTok, I was, I was looking at it with my wife and we kind of had like a little debate over it. And I said, would you rather fly one mile per hour anywhere? Like you, you can just fly, but you only fly at one mile per hour. Or be able to teleport anywhere in the world, but only to places where you use the bathroom. Like, uh, what, what would you do? Would you want to fly one mile an hour all the time? Or would you rather teleport to anywhere where you've been able to use the bathroom? I teleport because I, like, have the smallest bladder in the world. <laughs> yeah. I, like, constantly have to pee, like, on road trips and stuff. It's yeah. Just bad. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing too. Like, uh, like my wife was like, she's like, oh, I would love to fly. And I'm like, well, here's the thing though. Like you're being able to teleport to anywhere where you've used the bathroom. So yeah. I have the bladder of a five-year-old. So yeah. I've used the bathroom almost everywhere I've been. So mm -hmm. it's like, okay, if I want to go back to Asheville, North Carolina, okay, teleport, boom, I just drop in a bathroom. You know, I may land on some guy's lap who's currently shitting or something like that. <laughs> I was about to say that. Pretty weird. awkward. Hello. Yeah. You know, I'm just in that bathroom, but it's like, you know, instead of just sitting there and you're just, you know, I, I mean, I'm a big guy. I'm like 280 pounds, you know, these like fucking tiny wings, just struggling, just fly my ophi ass, you know, wherever it is, you know, one mile an hour. It's like, you yeah, know. that'd be real annoying. I think. I mean, it, it would take you like nine months to get to California. Yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> I haven't, I haven't traveled a lot, but I'd much rather teleport to a sheets. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I'm okay with that. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Yeah. Especially yeah. if you really have to go to the bathroom, that's convenient. <laughs> well, I mean, look at it like this, like, you know, you're flying or whatever and all that. You can just, you know, go to the bathroom down on, you know, the poor, the poor, poor bastards down <laughs> underneath. You know, it's just kind of like what it's kind of like a plane when like a plane drops the excrement, mm -hmm. you know, from the plane <laughs> down. It's just kind of like that. It's just kind of, well, you know, this person thinks the bird shit on their window. Wait until this human shit just, oh, <laughs> right down on their hood as I'm flying. Yeah. Are you flying high or are you flying like a foot off the ground? Well, I, I, hope you, I hope you have to fly like eight feet off the ground just yeah. so you're above everyone else just enough <laughs> yeah. to where yeah. you're like, what the fuck? is that guy doing I'm going so slow yeah right. somebody chases you with a car shooting a shotgun out the window they dude, so, you. somebody dude, somebody could chase you on yeah. foot like pretty nice. easily yeah. they could catch you in a butterfly yeah. net i don't know how well that'd go over i feel like you'd probably get shot <laughs> and uh what we'll do now is we'll move on to our uh, game called name three so what I'm going to do is I'm going to name, I'm going to say name three of a certain thing and you just okay. hold your head. So pretty much we were talking a little bit earlier about, you know, the junkie that I saw that removed the tooth mm -hmm. with screwdriver and pliers. If you had to, there was nothing else around. Of course, you've been in the military and, you know, way back in the day, they would just cut off arms and throw them out the window. <laughs> Ever a situation where you had to remove your body, a body part of yours, what do you think would be the three worst things to uh. use? That the you worst, the three stuff. worst things to cut to get rid of. 
Yeah, that you would have to cut off of yourself. Like, what would you think that if you had to get rid of something on like yourself, what do you think the three worst things would be? Well, any extremity, because you have to go through nerves. And then let's see what else. Probably your tongue. Yeah. yeah. That would bleed a lot. <laughs> um, and then any vital organ, you're not going to really enjoy cutting into your abdominal area and digging around. So yeah, just, uh, <laughs> your arms like up, like into your chest. You'll front. probably die before you get there. So, <laughs> now Tom, what, what about you? Uh, do, three do things. You have, if you had to remove something yourself, what would you not want to remove? Do you have to remove them yourself? Yeah, you have to remove <laughs> it yourself. All right. Well, then first, I'm taking the left arm. <laughs> All right. You must be right-handed. Right. That's yeah. going to be number one. Number two is going to be my hair. I didn't have that shit. <laughs> no, honestly, I don't know. That's a fucking wild question, right? Um, it is. I <laughs> see. It depends on how we're fucking phrasing it. Like, is it going to be like, can I just take a foot and leave the leg? <laughs> yeah, I mean. All right, well then I'm gonna, I'm going to go with both feet and one hand because we can make some cool prosthetics with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Matt, what about you? I have no fucking idea. <laughs> Don't take the head, dude. Don't take the head. No, I'm not saying that. It's a, it's a <laughs> Don't. dark question, but you're talking about things that you would wouldn't want to take. Like, like for example, like uh, things that I think would be the worst, like cut off. Like for example, I'll give you mine. Like I think my eyelids. Like me having to remove my Jesus. eyelids. You like, went way would, deep, right? You went that, way deep. Be, like imagine that. Like not only do you have to cut them off, you have to like like watch yourself pull your eyelids off, but then. You, uh no eyelids or like removing your own lips like, yeah, something like that. <laughs> I, I i'm in here with majority of men and none of us have said dick yeah. like, i'm not gonna cut off my own dick yeah, fuck no i'll be I'll a torso with way a dick. too much fun with that thing yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah i agree that that's the number one thing that that's it my dick yeah, yeah, I Matt, never Matt, that's like, that's like the dick. yogurt slinger goes nowhere mm -hmm. the yogurt slinger goes absolutely nowhere no. <laughs> all right and what we're going to do now is we're going to play a game called incoherent okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold up a series of cards and they're mm. basically in drunken lingo and you just need to sound them out the best you can there's a couple of hints on the back so mm -hmm. if you hints let me know but sound them out because a lot of times when you sound them out you'll hear yourself say what's on the card and you can figure it out a little bit easier can you read that card all right. Hog tote beer vest. Hog tote beer vest. Let's see. Oh, I know that one. I got it. Hog tote beer vest. I'm with you. <laughs> it's a long, long excuse to get drunk. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Oktoberfest. Yes, it is Oktoberfest. One of the other hints is beer, but spelled B I E R. So here's another one. What do you think that that says? Buffer tool led me acus elfie. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a lot. Yeah, that's Buffer, a lot. Fuck that. <laughs> fuck that one. Led me acus elfie. Let us buffer tool acus elfie. I have no idea. It, 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 I'll give you a hint. It is a song, but also one of the hints is wait, snap a pick. Buffer's tool. Oh, I <laughs> can I tag a friend? <laughs> what about you, Tom? You're raising your hand. What do you think? But, for, but first, let me take a selfie. Yes, yes. Oh, but first, wow. let me take a selfie. Uh, the other one was a song that examines society's obsession with the self. Mm. And then here's this one right here Offer Dove Ant Sand Chop. Offer Dove Ant Sand Chop. And one of the hints is heavy duty rub heavy duty rub oh <laughs> offer hand job no but you are close you do have the last quote the last part of it which is hand job oh okay offer dubs it's a highly sophisticated mm -hmm. maneuver that takes all four years of college to master All four years of college. <laughs> I don't know. Of college to learn how to give a hand job. 
It's, oh, give a hand. I don't really give hand jobs anymore. <laughs> I go straight yeah. to blood job. Who does? Who does? It's over the <laughs> pants hand job. So oh, over, yeah. over the pants? Why would you do over the pants? Oh, no, no, no. There's so yeah. much yeah. friction. That's, That's not out. fun at all. <laughs> All right. Hey, hey, hey shout, shout, out, shout out, shout out to my buddy Tyler, who would love an over the pants hand job. So that's a good place to start. <laughs> yep. Oh man. And uh, of course, this segment is called Ode to Humanity. So the main part of this is Cards Against Humanity. Have you ever played Cards Against Humanity? I have. All Most right. So we we do it a little bit differently on the show. So pretty much, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read off the category card, the black card, and then I'm going to give you number one through five, and you're going to randomly pick a number to randomly answer that card. Okay. If you don't like that answer, you get one rebuttal to answer it with something else. So here's the first card. What's hot, smelly, and about to die? And you have a choice between one and five. Betty White. Randomly answer that. Uh, three. Three. All right. So three. So what's hot, smelly, and about to die? gladiatorial combat so are you satisfied with that or would you like to choose another card uh no that's pretty good you like that all right cool so some of the options you could have had was white privilege oh my god <laughs> that one would have been really good <laughs> the tiniest shred of evidence that god is real oh my gosh Science. also good <laughs> yeah. or a murder most foul so those are some of the options that you probably could have chose for those that all good <laughs> depends then, on who is the person picking it what's that it depends on the person picking it yeah. you have to know yeah. their humor so. <laughs> and then here's the other one what's my anti-drug one through five four four all right so four what's my anti-drug the ghost of marlon brando no, I want to pick something else. All right, all right. So four is out of the equation. What other number would you like to choose? One. One. All right. So let's see. One. All right. What's my anti-drug? Putting an entire peanut butter and jelly sandwich into the VCR. <laughs> okay. I mean, if you can find a VCR anymore. <laughs> and some of the other options that you could have chose were vigor vigorous jazz hands. Almost giving money to a homeless person <laughs> and grammar Nazis who are also regular Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one's pretty good. <laughs> and oh my gosh. That's going to conclude our O to Humanity segment. Now, of course, you brought up, you know, gangbangs before, and Erica even said that, mm -hmm. you know, you're kind of like, you're kind of like a queen of gangbangs. Like you do a lot of get, like, I have, have, yeah. Have you ever like done one of those scenes? like just something just goes wrong like you know you just walk in and there's like just all these dick microphones just blah, 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 and it's kind of like what what's happening like what uh all right whatever like i guess we'll go with it <laughs> yeah the, the hardest part in like a gangbang situation is i do very intense positions so like uh double penetration airtight airtight plus two and so like dicks have to cooperate um what? and they what? have to what? stay hard <laughs> um <laughs> So, I would like um, I would like to know kind of what airtight plus say. two is. It's like airtight skiing, so you're like. Oh, all right, we got okay, got yeah. it. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I get, I get so it. I just call it plus two because it's two dicks in my hand. But um, <laughs> so I say that <laughs> vibe has to be there, so the guys have to be able to stay hard, and um, it helps if there's like a fluffer on set to keep them hard, because the hardest part for me is having to go back to sucking their dick getting them hard and then going back to another position. So as long as that doesn't happen, um, things are good. Um, but majority of the time, um, even with uh, established male talents, they do have some problems keeping their dicks hard, especially if it's like several hours of shooting. Oh yeah, I can I can only imagine. And uh, what, what I actually forgot to do is before we went into our game segment was to get into our featured beer. So our featured beer, oh, of course, what we had last week it is a continuation. It is Lancaster Brewing Company Double Chocolate Stout. So make sure 
You go out, pick some double chocolate stout. Of course, it says on the back, don't miss out on the intense roasted malts, silky smooth mouthfeel, which I'm sure, you know, people have described probably some of your movies like that or some of the scenes. Yeah, I hope so. Subtle, (laughs) Subtle sweetness and velvety chocolate goodness of our double chocolate milk stout. We've gone over the top with more malt than fusion of cocoa nibs and pure chocolate for a truly mind-blowing experience in beer. That sounds like a porn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and I don't know if you noticed on the cans, they have like chocolate cows being <laughs> in slaughter. So they're, they're like, it's like they're a, not being uh, slaughtered, candy. they're being milked. Yeah, yeah no, it's oh, a candy wrap. They're being milked? <laughs> so yeah, it's a wrapper, but I thought it was cows being led to the slaughter, but I'm going to go ahead with that. And then, uh, of course, our <laughs> featured shot, of course, right now currently is jack daniels winter blend so make sure you go out and get some of jack daniels winter blend cider and uh, matt's not here this week so uh i'm drinking solo of course matt's probably drinking at his house but in spirit of everything that's holy i'm gonna keep on pouring this over the laptop until one day i spill this on the laptop and our live feed goes dead never to be seen again <laughs> cheers everybody and shout out to jack daniels, Jack, and of course lancaster brewing company for their double chocolate stout what are you drinking, Ray Ray? I drink like girly wine. No, I drink Riesling. <laughs> I I actually am drinking right now rum chata and hot chocolate. That, that sounds, sounds really horrible. good, actually. It is, it is amazing. <laughs> you, you, know, you know what might be good? I actually uh, shout out the the Sherry Nelson. She's the one who said Matt, she's the one who sent us the Metallica whiskey. I had mm-hmm. gotten a box in the mail and me and my wife opened it. I'm like, what the, I'm like, who the fuck sent me this? I don't know. And it was it was a box that had like cocoa balls in it. Like it kind of looked like the bath bombs, but there were cocoa balls with marshmallows inside of them. Wow. Who the fuck sent me this? And eventually I found something that said, Merry Christmas, Sherry Nelson. And I messaged her. I'm like, oh, thank you. You know, she's like, try it with rum chata or Bailey's. And pretty much mm-hmm. what you do is you drop it in there and, and it disintegrates and basically makes like hot chocolate out of the cocoa balls. So that's one thing we definitely want to try is dropping yeah. that into that sounds good it is amazing it is amazing so and one thing that i remember from you know talking about your gangbanging scenes is the fluffer of course everybody you know i remember when i was in high school everybody used to be like oh you're the fluffer aren't you like uh, like, yeah yeah like how how does that work like when you're a fluffer in like a porn film like what exactly like like if someone were to sit down for like a job interview and you know you're sitting there and you're looking the person in the eyes and you know what's the job description you know you think it would be for like a fluffer like what would their qualifications have to be you suck dick yes you got it. they have to be able to suck dick but only good enough to keep the dick hard not good enough to completion okay so oh, pretty sign much- me up yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm right there. <laughs> so, so pretty much the fluffer just blows it. That that's what they're doing. They're just they're yeah. sucking. They're there to keep the dick hard, but just for a limited time. Like I've had issues where sometimes the guys stay with the fluffer, and I'm oh. like, no, you need to come over here. We have over positions here. and things to do. <laughs> so, Get over here and fuck me in the ass. Yeah. Get over here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So um, I'd say that would be probably the biggest point is that you have to be pretty good at sucking dick, but not good enough that you take the cum from the guy's dicks. I right, I, right. I feel oh, like yeah. that with that, they should fuck with the actors a little bit. You know, like it, it's the kind of thing that like you bring in like a midget or something like, you know, they just don't know. <laughs> and it's like, you know, it's this little person that just comes in or you get like just these hard knock, just... 100 percent straight lace straight porn stars and then they bring in like a gay man and they're like oh this is your fluffer today and then there's just kind of like, in between they're just kind of like eh, what well i mean we're live we're shooting like you need you need to keep yourself cool buddy just just go on over it's, it's fine it's fine just, just just look over at ray ray you'll be fine you'll be fine <laughs> i, I want yeah, ray i don't think that would go very so well bad. so men's boners are very fragile they're fragile things um i don't think that their their boners would deal well with that so (laughs) and and i feel like you know just imagine that you get a fluffer on set and they're like everybody you know (laughs) and they're like let me introduce you to tom nutty this is your fluffer tonight and then everybody's just kind of like oh man you know cool stage name tom like that you know hey you know what and i'm I'm just over there like i'm gonna suck your dick but not that good (laughs) <laughs> just <laughs> mediocre yeah. you ready for the best mediocre blowjob you ever had 
So I, I do got a question though. Have you okay. ever had to, had to fire one of the fluffers because they were sucking dick way too good? And you're like, hey, you're taking all the jizz for yourself. That's not fair. No, no, I've never had to do that. It's kind of outlined beforehand. Um, and the guys also know like if they're getting close, um, I always tell them I need to use your cum for certain things or the cum needs to be used for certain things. And so if they waste cum off camera, then that's not good. <laughs> so demanding. <laughs> I am. I, I'm, I'm a cum slut, so I have to have all the cum. Yeah, she has. Um, if yeah, I'm she, doing yeah. like a rec gangbang, that's a little different. Like if I have other women there to help keep the guys hard for like the very large gangbangs that I do, um, that's very different. Like if they end up coming, that's... that's so like... You're like the Shang Tsung of like Mortal Kombat, but like a porn book. <laughs> Your cum is mine. And yeah. just right through the fucking cock. <laughs> yeah, it keeps me motivated. It keeps me happy. So, yeah. Oh, man. Is, is it like the kind of thing where you ever had like a situation where, you know, they went over to the fluffer and they're like, okay, I'm ready to go. But like, they're like kind of too far away like they're like so, like they're like five foot away and they're just kind of like, oh god so like they just kind of run over as fast as they can <laughs> and just kind of let it rip it's like because if something like that happens i would be amused just to see how that would look on the editing room floor like cutting that like you know preventing the dude like you just see him running over and then like you you get a camera cut and all you see is just whoosh, just you know just the yogurt oh. slinging out of the yogurt slinger, you know, just boom, and it's just that. And it's like you never knew, yeah. you never knew that that guy was just in fucking panic mode. <laughs> oh, oh no, oh no, yeah, you would. Um, the magic of editing is that potentially you could edit it in where you never know that happens. Oh, <laughs> and I mean, really, that's the magic with editing with anything. Like you can almost ed nowadays, especially with the way it is. Like you know, and me and Matt talk about it a lot of time on the show is, you know, the new uh, VR headsets, the the Oculus sets out. Like it's crazy, the things that they are doing with mm -hmm. you know that alone. But you know, just editing. Like you you can sit there. Like there's so much stuff that's like posted on the internet that's just completely fake because some fucker is good with Photoshop, and yeah. you're just kind of like, wait a minute. Wait, that's, that's a Mandela effect thing. I know it is. It's just like, nah, you mean to tell me that Ariana Grande never did a porn? <laughs> I don't fucking yeah, believe. Yeah, they probably edited her head on somebody else. Oh Sadly. my god, what is that? Those Sadly. Like, it's like deep. I feel bad for whoever they edited over there. <laughs> I am writing a letter to my congressman. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, have they you... got the body type the same. <laughs> it's close enough. Oh my god, have have you ever seen any of those deep fake movies? They're, they're insane. Yeah, they're like, I fell down a rabbit hole one day with them, and there were people who did them of Scarlett Johansson, and they found like the closest like body they could to Scarlett Johansson. I'm just sitting there looking, and I'm like, it's her. I, I, they did this so well. Like, I, I can't sit there and just not deny. Like, I, yeah. I really, I really appreciate the ones that aren't close. Like, right. you know what I mean? It's just like, <laughs> ah, you fucking it's got comedic. some clickbait. Oh like, you know like, what I mean? Did they, like, robot funny. chicken the fuck out of it. <laughs> yes. Oh. It's like, what is this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a cheap fake Frankenstein. <laughs> I mean, I'm still, I'm still going to watch, but I, I know, you know. I mean, yeah, of course. <laughs> I know. You can just imagine. <laughs> now that you brought up robot chicken, it's like, I wonder if there's any, like, porn scenes out there where, like, someone just kind of, like, did like that weird animation that you see in like robot chicken and just did like a whole like you know scene robot chicken style with like you know I, i'm sure there's a market for it somewhere anything right anything you can think of it's been done and it's out there you gotta find it yeah and <laughs> ray ray what would you say is probably the the oddest thing you've done in a movie that you would say right offhand mm, let's see what's the oddest thing well there's the oddest thing i've done that's not on film but on film most of my stuff is normal i would rather hear not on film <laughs> yeah. let's hear not um, on film okay I've, I've put my foot in the guy's ass see oh. that's fucking way better <laughs> now tell us how that happened um he was just one of my playmates that i had known before i started doing adult film and um he he liked being fisted and he liked he called it the footing. Um, so I 
I lived in um, New Zealand all of 2019, and so I met some playmates over there. And so imagine this in a New Zealand accent. He's like, we're doing the footing now. Oh. Um, and yeah, he would have Sounds me. like a scavenger hunt. Yeah. Oh, we're just doing the footing. <laughs> yeah. it, it was an ordeal, though. Like, so he had a thing for feet. So I had my foot, like, in his mouth, my other foot. And then he had me put one of those plastic gloves on my other foot. So I have that in his ass. And I'm like moving that around and then I'm like jerking him off. So it's after, like my entire body is just like. <laughs> after <laughs> all that, he wanted a plastic glove on the foot? Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, I, mean, I wanted a plastic glove. I mean. Uh, if you wanted it, that's cool. But for, for him, it's like, that's that's where we draw the line. <laughs> also, is it, is it just me or does the footing sound like an M, an M. Night Shyamalan movie? Like, yeah, I, it's a, it's a yeah. J.R.R. Tolkien yeah. film. Yeah, that, I don't know if you've ever seen it. <laughs> yeah, Lord of the Foots. Yeah, um, yeah, that's probably the strangest uh, thing I've done off camera. Most things on camera are normal, like multiple cum loads and you know double well, angles. Probably the craziest thing I've done to date. Um, but how deep did you go with this foot? I'm still on this foot. I'm sorry. <laughs> did you? Yeah, go I mean, like, are, are we like angle um, deep? Or? Yeah, it was like, all the way up to so, like it was like, up to her knee like here. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. god it was like a it was kind of like a fisting but with her foot so like it's it was like, almost the like footing. the footing, <laughs> the footing. Yeah. that's what it's called the foot oh my god <laughs> so you went almost ankle deep you were ankle deep in a dude's ass yes. <laughs> when you got it when you got it all the way in did you say like goal that's what i would have done just saying. <laughs> no but he loved it so i got i just kept going with it that's oh fucking wild <laughs> Could wow. you imagine though, like you know, something happened? Ray, no, no, I can't imagine. Ankle deep, Ray. <laughs> you're, not, you're, just ankle deep. That's you're it. ankle just, deep, and he he like panics, and, like his asshole just slams shut on your ankle, like, and then all of a sudden you need to go to the hospital. Could you imagine that? Like, you know, you, you know, know, like, oh, like you know, to the ER. You know what's fucked up is I'm going to be saying ankle deep for like the next year and a half, ankle and deep. nobody's going to get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, well, you know what? Trust yeah. me, it's a thing. Like, it's a thing, and very select few people have experienced it. Yeah, it, it's like it could be worse. You could be ankle deep in a man's ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm all about normalizing kink and fetish. We all have strange things that we oh, yeah. like. This so. is very true. It's true. Look, I'm all for it, but I promise you, I'm going to be saying ankle deep for a That's minute. That's good. <laughs> I've, I've never forgot it, so. <laughs> I bet. And, uh, I wouldn't know what, to, I think I would cry afterwards. <laughs> afterwards? It, dep it, it depends on which side of the fence you're on. During. I mean, if you really liked it, you know. Yeah. Um, but are, are you the ankle or are you receiving? That's what we want to know. Personally, well, I'd rather I receive than, than. I would be receiving, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, obviously. But at that point, like, it, it's gonna be weird. Like, once your toes get far enough in there, like, you know, wiggle like, them, around. them around a little bit. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> like yeah. To toes in the sand. Just wiggle your toes. Just like, wiggle. wiggle toes. <laughs> I mean, it's the same with fisting. Like, when I put my hand in someone and you feel your fingers moving around, it's like kind of weird. It's a weird sensation. I don't know if any of you guys have fisted someone before, but. It's a very intense, like nope. Matt's thinking you're, about. You're like inside someone else. I, I'm sure guys understand that more than women because you have dicks and you're actually inside someone. But as a woman, you're like, I'm actually inside this person, and you can wiggle your fingers. It's 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 unreal. Yeah, you're so far up their ass. You you wiggle your fingers and they just start talking like a puppet. Like they're, <laughs> they're just they're just kind of like a ventriloquist. Yeah, you can control them. Everything you yeah. Do. yeah. So wait, if you were to do that to a little person. Like, would you be able? Oh God! To, would you be able? To, like, <laughs> would would your foot like they would literally? At least he said little people. <laughs> like your 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 leg goes so deep in their ass that like your foot, you, you see your toes just wiggling and like, and like I the back of his like. Little, I mean, you like, can only would, put would so much. Would the they be ass? a foot taller? <laughs> Technically, he, he would. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Oh. That's hilarious. That's terrible. Oh, we're gonna burn in hell, but you know what? God bless us. <laughs> and uh, Ray, Ray, what we're gonna let you do is uh, we're we're approaching the one hour mark, so we're gonna let you get ready to get out of here. 
Okay. Um, where, can, uh, where can everybody find you? Of course, your website's going to be, uh, you know, up and live soon. Of course, you got X3 coming up. Where can everybody find you if uh, they want to see your content or reach out to you? So um, as of right now, since my website's not fully up, um, I have content on many vids right now. So XX, Ray Ray XX. And then majority of my stuff that I post daily is on Twitter. So Ray underscore Ray underscore XXX. And then my new website, which should be going live tomorrow, hopefully. I'm going to get in the web developer's ass, um, hopefully. Uh, ankle um, deep. Is, ankle deep. Yeah, ankle deep. Yeah. <laughs> like more like like two, because I'm, I'm actually very mad at them. Um, is uh, RayRayXXX.com is going live, hopefully, tomorrow. And then I had to start a new Instagram. So if you want to start following me there, you can. It's Ray of Sunshine underscore five to nine. So... And uh, of course, we're on Facebook Live. Uh, Alex Tonello, he uh, he said favorite shoe size for you know the the ankle. The ankle. He said he's ten I mean, and a half. You would no, no, no. I mean, I have a seven and a half inch foot, so oh. that's probably a lot more doable. Um, I but I, I mean, that. the person's anatomy, I guess. Um, Not uh, like a Michael Jordan's foot. <laughs> And, uh, so. <laughs> I would like to answer by saying that there is no shoe size I want in my answer. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what if it's like Chinese? What if it's like get Chinese a pedicure football? before you do that? Yeah, get a pedicure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> show show that ass you care. You yeah. know, get, get a pedicure yeah. before yeah. and then get a pedicure after because you may need one after as well. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of prep and bump. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, of course, uh, for everybody uh, watching here on YouTube and for everybody watching us here on Facebook Live and everybody listening at home, we will be back next week. Our featured guest will be Scott Page. He's the saxophonist from Pink Floyd, Toto, Super Tramp. You know, it's going to be an honor talking to him. It's going to be fun. Um, and uh, that's going to be right here on Facebook Live next Saturday. And uh, that's going to be at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. So make sure you go over to www.thhpod.com. Find that. Um, also, buy some merchandise. Our merch store is over there. And speaking of which, Ray Ray, uh, when we're done, shoot us your address. We like to uh, try to send out a shirt to our guests as a thank you. Um, we are a little backed up on them, though. So uh, just uh, keep in mind, it may not be you know, immediately. And um, real quick before you go. Would, uh, would you just be able to do a plug for us and say this is Ray Ray and you're uh, listening to the Happy Hour Podcast? Sure. Awesome. Hey, this is Ray Ray and you're listening to the Happy Hour Podcast. Awesome. Thank you. We appreciate it very, very much. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. And Happy Thank New you. Year to all of you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you for coming on and experiencing. Yeah, anytime fucked up you know show i mean that's yeah. the thing like we get very few notes but i like to just you know just shoot from the hip and that you know yeah. that's yeah. that you know yeah. and, and before you go i would like to give a shout out to all the fluffers out there that just <laughs> don't suck with dick enough no, not the really good fluffers mediocre. just like the media yeah, not the really good fluffers so here's to you yeah. fuck, the, fuck the good fluffers Here, here's <laughs> the fluffers so everybody what we will do yeah. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this up on Facebook Live and on all of our major audio podcast platforms. We will see you guys next week.